while experiencing a chronic condition that greatly impacted her daily life. Our next guest leveraged her knowledge of big data for a better cause to help herself and others around the world. Bettina Hine, CEO of Julie, joins us to discuss how she and her team are helping users manage their chronic conditions such as asthma, migraine, depression, bipolar disorder, and chronic pain. Additionally, Bettina overviews her innovative approach of using secure data tracking and artificial intelligence that assesses a patient's current state of health to make daily actionable improvements to their condition. Join us to learn how Bettina and her company are transforming people's lives by helping others manage their chronic diseases with an AI-powered app that combines their healthcare data in one place. Let's go. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Bettina, welcome to our podcast. It's such an honor to meet up with you today. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having me on. Well, given your story journey of building game-changing technology and companies, as well as your passion for helping others live healthier lives, I'm fired up for the conversation we're about to have. But first, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast. You will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Lastly, please visit the bottom of the episode notes to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Clubhouse in order to further the conversations occurring on this podcast. All right, Bettina, it's almost time for our community to learn how Julie came to be and how your company is helping people manage their chronic condition with an AI-powered app that contains all of their healthcare data in one place. But first, what's that one piece of advice you would give to others who are passionate about reimagining the health of our world? The most important piece of advice is start with the user, start with the patient, and then see what data you can bring to the table. There's so much out there. What can you bring to the table to help people lead healthier lives? I love it. And when you say start with the user, start with the patient, do you mean actually talking to them, engaging with them, seeing what they need? I'm imagining that's where we're going with the piece of advice. Absolutely. Yes. It's so easy these days to engage with people and test what you're going to do. We're not in the labs anymore. We're not in the phase anymore where you can do the field of dreams, build it and they will come. You can test every little bit of what you're doing and get feedback before you even write a single line of code. So do that. Talk to users and as entrepreneurs, you know what often entrepreneurs do is they solve their own problems, right? They find a problem that they're passionate about. They find other people that have that problem and they solve it. And that's how I got to Julie. I love it. And we're going to talk more about Julie in just a moment, but I'm going to want to stay on this for just one more second, Bettina, because I think it's important. It is so true, right? We used to have, you know, we used to be in these labs and these kind of theoretical towers and we would build off theory and what we think that the market would need. But wouldn't it be true? I mean, this is your third startup. Again, we're going to talk more about in just a moment. But we can rapidly test now in the marketplace. We can get rapid feedback, iterate, go back out and get more feedback, iterate, and continuing to hone in on what the actual need is in the marketplace. Would that be true, Bettina? Absolutely. I mean, we constantly test things before we let people look at a design, like five different ones, and give us feedback before we even put that in our product, before, as I said, a single line of code is written. And you can do that with every element of what you do, right? It's not just the patient facing part. It's also the provider facing part, the insurer facing part. You can do all of that and you can do it relatively cheaply these days, right? You don't need to spend a fortune. And that's why I think passionate pioneers that you invite can actually disrupt this market. You used to have to spend so much money on doing this. And these days, it's become easier. 
We have so much more access to data. If you're savvy about analysis, there's so much you can do that wasn't possible three years ago, five years ago. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. We've talked about it time and time again on this podcast, Bettina, but thank you for continuing to remind us, spend time with the end user, whoever she or he may be, get that feedback, iterate and continue to hone in on what those needs are. So thank you again for that, Bettina, incredibly important advice. I'm looking forward to discussing all the wonderful work happening at Julie after we get back from thinking our community champion sponsor. Located in Denver, Colorado's nationally ranked River North District, Catalyst is a healthcare innovation campus that brings together stakeholders from across the industry to accelerate innovation and drive real, lasting change our nation desperately needs. From established organizations to startups, from accelerators to advocacy organizations, and from medical schools to global companies, everyone at Catalyst works side by side to create, develop, refine, and bring to market cutting-edge innovations that will fundamentally transform healthcare as we know it. With industry leaders like Medical Group Management Association, Olive, Medical Solutions, UC Health, Cirrus MD, and many others calling Catalyst home, along with innovative pioneers visiting from across the nation, Catalyst continually fosters their foundational belief that collaboration and partnerships will move the healthcare industry forward. To virtually tour Catalyst and claim your space on campus, or host an upcoming event, visit CatalystHealthTech.com or visit the top of the episode notes and click on their link. All right, we are back with Bettina Hines, CEO, Julie. Bettina, thank you again for joining up with us today. Some sage advice right out the gates. It is very important. Spend time with that end user. We're going to talk about the end user of Julie in just a moment. But first, of course, got to tee up. This is going to be such an exciting conversation. I have a celebrity on today a celebrity back in Switzerland on their version of Shark Tank. Also, you are a young global leader for the World Economic Forum. This is your third company you founded. You've had some exits before. You've been there. You've done that. I'm sure you've bought a few t-shirts along the way, as we like to say. But, you know, there's so much to discuss today on why you continued on and started another company, your founding of Julie, where you guys are today with the company, where you see things heading, and then, of course, how we can be helping you out. Let's start, Bettina. Let's talk about how did this all come together? Again, third company you founded. Bettina, how did Julie come to be? And then we'll get into what's happening current state. So as you mentioned, it's my third company. And all of those companies have been in different areas. I did text-to-speech software. I did video advertising optimization. And now I'm doing digital health. But what all those companies have in common is that I apply with my teams, AI and machine learning to large sets of data. I did this, I may be a young global leader, but my first company I did 20 years ago. So even before it was a hype thing, we used neural networks at my first company to calculate sentence prosodies from turning text into speech. I'm just applying what I've learned along the way. And the way I got to Julie is actually from personal experience. 10 years ago, I had my first child, Louisa, and she was a preemie. I was CEO of a young company. I had just 10 days prior to her birth. I closed a round of funding and I fell on my way to the office and she came early. It was a huge shock to me. And from that point on, I could not sleep. I couldn't sleep. And I went to my PCP several times and told him, I cannot sleep. And he said, you're stressed at work and I can't give you anything because you're breastfeeding. Well, duh, I'm the CEO of a growing company. I just raised money and yes, I'm stressed at work. What else is new? So I got no help and I decided, okay, I am going to help myself. So I started wearing a sleep monitor, sort of a headband device back then, a company called Zio. I was living in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and they were also from there. I knew the CEO. And so I started doing that and I essentially hacked my way back to health. It was astounding to me how much data I could collect just from health. 
from sleep. But what I saw then is that I had to do a lot of things by hand and figure out what was happening at the same time. So I kind of got into the quantified self using AI, which was already being deployed a bit there in Zio and the sleep headband. And I kind of kept that going and I went through a couple of other health challenges along the way. And so three years ago, when I handed over my CEO duties at Pixability, my second company to a professional CEO, I kept thinking about this. And then last year in March, I assembled, so in March, 2020, I assembled a team and we were off to the races to create software, which is it's a whole platform, but first part is an app that helps people manage their chronic conditions by recording everything that they have on their smartphones, everything that they have on connected devices and wearables, environmental data, which is really important, like weather, sunlight, hours, humidity, air quality, pollen count. We do that really hyper-locally. We connect EHR data, and then we tie that all together with patient-reported data. And so it comes from personal suffering. My CTO has chronic asthma. We have a lot of people in the company that are touched themselves or their loved ones by this because chronic conditions are so common that this journey is familiar to a lot of people and people feel helpless. I felt helpless. And that's why I created Julie to help myself and help others. Well, thank you for that powerful story, Bettina. Much appreciated. It really sets the stage where we're going to take the conversation today. Before we dive in a bit more into the details of what Julie is and what you guys have built, you mentioned it at the very front end of the recording here about getting that user feedback, spending time with whoever that might be. When you started first seeing the potential need, Bettina, did you scan the marketplace? Was there nothing out there like a Julie? Is the market ready? Are people ready for this notion of quantified self? Let's go there first before I ask you what the elevator pitch for Julie. Is the market ready for all of this? And what did you see when you did a scan? Well, I tried to solve my own problem and I looked at pretty much everything on the market and it wasn't for me. I couldn't find what I needed to use. There are lots of things out there with a community here and cognitive behavioral therapy here, but really logging things that happen in your life passively, right? Not having to write this super long journal, et cetera. I couldn't find that anywhere and figuring out what your triggers and levers are. If it's out there, please contact me. I always tell people I'm not scared of competition at all because there's so many ideas out there. And when somebody (laughs) says, I have this, and it's a much better mousetrap than yours, I'm like, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank you. If you can do this better than I can, (laughs) I'm so grateful. So yeah, let me know if any of the listeners have great things that they have. Always happy to learn. I love it. Now we're going to talk about your mousetrap at Julie. I know you've done it time and again. Like I said, you were a star back in Switzerland with the version of Shark Tank. You had to do this on live television. So we're going to ask you to do it here on the podcast as well. What is the elevator pitch for Julie? Julie is a chronic condition management platform and we help people manage their chronic conditions by logging the five different types of data I just talked to you about. I'm not going to repeat them. What we do is we cover complex chronic conditions that are multifactorial, and we currently cover asthma, depression, bipolar disorder, chronic pain, and migraine. We cover those because it is about changing behavioral change. It's about seeing all the factors that influence your condition and sharing that data with people that can help you. I love it. Now, I have to go there because you and I have spent, obviously, a fair amount of time in the healthcare industry and sharing of data, how do I say this diplomatically, is sometimes not the easiest thing in the world to do in the healthcare industry. 
How has that journey been for Julie? Are you guys finding new, unique, and innovative ways to do exactly that? Can you talk a little bit about that user journey and what that looks like in regards to the engagement with Julie? Well, a lot of this data is already there, right? It's all about connecting the data silos. And I know that healthcare, it seems so difficult, but for me, it's not really rocket science, right? In my last company, we connected dozens of APIs to bring data together. Question is, do people want to share that data with you? And we're riding right now on the coattails of things that are happening, right? The interoperability standards, FHIR, what Apple has been doing with Apple Health, all of these connected things. The time is now to do this and to apply modern data science to all of these things and apply it directly to the patient. You know, for years, people have been saying the patient is the new doctor. I don't think that that's going to be quite true. We do need professionals, but I think I believe in patient empowerment. I believe people want to be partners, seen as partners in their healthcare, and not like there's these doctors that are limp in their white coats. So I believe in that partnership model, and I believe people are ready to share their own data. And as long as you can guarantee that their data is theirs, it doesn't belong to an EHR provider, doesn't belong to a hospital system, it doesn't belong to Apple, doesn't belong to Julie, belongs to the patient. Yeah, no, you're spot on. I mean, you you also mentioned, you know, FHIR, what they're doing with the Apple and all those things, of course, the 21st Century Cures Act, right? That's been helpful here stateside. And then, of course, just where the market is heading. I agree with you as well. I don't necessarily believe that the patient is a new doctor, but I do firmly believe in putting the patient at the center of care, putting the patient at the center of a multi-spoked hub and wheel. That is the true magic. And I think that's where we're heading and we need to go in order to really give power and empowerment back to the patient. It sounds like you guys are doing exactly that. So Bettina, let's talk about also, so you have your end user being the patients and all that, the consumers. Who else is involved? Are you guys working with health systems? Are you working with the payer market? What does it look like in regards to other stakeholders leveraging Julie? So we're still in pretty early stages of the company, but what we're doing right now is going into the market and having conversations starting pilots with risk-bearing entities. We believe there is an opportunity for Julie within the payer market, within the employer market, also within ACOs, within pharma. What we have to find is our sweet spot there. What I've learned in my conversations in the market, and our app has only been on the market for six months, so you know it's still early days there, is that... There are a million different solutions hitting the market right now. Some people say 200 different new apps are flooding the digital health market. That is overwhelming for all of the risk-bearing entities out there. And what we at Julie are trying to do is to make that easier, covering the Omadas and Livongo Teladocs of the world are covering diabetes and cardiovascular health. That's great. But the other top 15 conditions that cost a lot of money, we believe that with our data centric approach, we can help cover a lot of those and make it easier for, for example, employers to cover their populations, a bigger amount of their populations instead of doing all these point solutions. That's where we think our place in in the market is and will be. I love it. Good stuff. And so let's also talk about a little future state. Bettina, obviously you mentioned it's still early days, but these are some of the most, I've done it before as well. These are some of the most exciting days, the things that you get to learn right out the gates. It's unbelievable. Again, go and answer the call what the end user needs. These types of scenarios, early days of the company. I absolutely just love it. I absolutely love it. So with that, Bettina, again, still early days, but where do you see things heading? Not just with Julie, but also the industry with how we're going to engage as patients and consumers. Where do you see things going? A lot has changed, as we all know, over the past year and a half with the pandemic. And I think things are going to continue to accelerate in regards to how we think about uh, consuming and engaging with the healthcare industry. Where do you see things heading, again, both with Julie 
and the industry at large? The work is just getting started. I mean, I could talk all day about how excited I am to bring these different elements of data in. Today, I got a test, a PCR test, which will take four genes to show how my muscles affect my health. And then I get recommendations for that. I'm looking to build that into Julie, all of these other genetic testing, home test things. There's like a million possibilities to do that. But I have to be really careful not to geek out too much on that because I am this innovator and I could go crazy all day long about it. So Julie will, being sort of the more rationally headed CEO here, will expand to more conditions and we will make sure that our provider facing part of the app is just meshes really well with existing systems. All of that is we're doing that right now. Right now, we've collected enough data to train lots of our models and have found really non-intuitive correlations in our data already after six months. So that's sort of more the bread and butter. But I do believe for the future of healthcare that this more encompassing part is important. We can do things at much lower cost because we've experienced in the pandemic how many things we can do from home, how much care can be provided without people having to go commute, right, to a certain healthcare location. A lot of these things had just a huge step change and we're only starting to see the potential of that when people stop hogging data and understanding that you need to share that data, you can do that securely, right? There's secure machine learning, there's federated learning. You can do all of that without compromising anybody's identity. But when in the future state that I can envision, when people share that freely, we can make a huge difference at a population level, but also at a personal health level. Yeah, what I also get excited about, and you kind of touched upon it a little bit, Bettina, is this notion of quantified self, you had connected to self when you're thinking about predictive analytics and talking about, you know, layering on top of, like you mentioned, weather data, water quality data, environmental data, economic data. I mean, the opportunity for future state really is endless. And to me, it's an exciting one. Like you mentioned, there are secure ways to share data. We cannot be hoarders of it. I believe if we start uh, sharing and sharing more freely in a secure fashion, it's going to raise all boats within this tide. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And just let me mention one thing that we've already seen. We've seen that the third highest predictor of depression, well, the first one is your mood that you indicate. The second one is movement, makes a lot of sense. But the third one is air quality. And we have seen this, you know, our population is dispersed across the United States. We also have international users. So it's not as if we would have, you know, there was some sort of air quality spike, you know, in pollution. We see it isolated, but we see that across our data. And we have only six months of this data. So imagine what other things we will be able to show once we get more of this. And another thing that we're already able to do is state prediction. So we can tell you if you're going to go into a flare up three days, four days ahead of time, sometimes even longer, we can then alert your support system, your healthcare providers, you of course, as the patient first and foremost, but we can really help people take out those highs and lows of their condition just because we have these reams of streaming data and put that together. And that's what I've personally been searching for for a long time. I have to manage my own condition and I do so diligently because I need to do that to stay healthy. So if I can do that and share that with others, that would just be so fulfilling and amazing for me. Couldn't agree more. And, and thank you for that, Bettina. Wow, that is uh, very eye-opening in regards to air quality. Unbelievable. One question just popped in my head I do want to ask because it's 
intriguing to me. A lot of it is uh, this question is really brought upon right now, this whole debate about the COVID-19 vaccine and the pediatric space, children, et cetera. Do you see, Bettina, what you guys are building as the potentially being an aid to mothers like yourself with their children as well? I mean, the younger generations, connected devices, technology, apps, that's just ubiquitous to their experience, right? That's just like, they're just so used to it. Where do you see these types of technologies potentially helping and empowering our youth as well as parents like yourself? So right now, Julie is for above 18 year olds, but our users are already coming to us and saying, this is so mean. I'm 16 and I want to use your app. So we already see this in our data. We also see people using it off label. We're going more into autoimmune diseases. So people have been telling us, you know, they want to use it for RA, but for the pediatric and youth population, we started with conditions with early onset, right? That was sort of the thing that we wanted to do is, you know, there are a lot of things for old people conditions, right? If there's a bulk of healthcare costs there, but I believe in preventative measures as well. And if you have early onset, if you manage very well, you're going to save a lot of cost and a lot of heartbreak for yourself if you do that early. So I think, yes, parents will do that, especially those that have a family history of certain things where you can start seeing things in your children where you know that there is a chance that they will have this, right? A certain a condition, whether that is asthma, lots of that runs in families, mental health conditions. For me as a mother, yes, since I'm learning more and more about about this, I've become more and more vigilant around the signs for my children. And I try not to be too much of a worry wart around that, but it would be helpful to teach them from an early age to listen to their body and to monitor the signals without freaking out about it, but saying, look, this is take care of yourself and listen if there are things that are out of bounds. Thank you for that. Very, very important. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the coming years. That is for sure. And to hopefully take a little bit of the worry out of a mother just like yourself. So thank you for that. Because we did talk right before we recorded your children and her dance lesson, which was exciting to hear about before we hit the record button. So always, always good to learn about family and children as well. So, well, of course, Bettina, you mentioned that Julie is still early. You're six months in building away. So of course, we want to be helpful to you and the mission and vision that's happening with Julie. What is one problem, need, or question that you and the team at Julie have that we can be helping you with? Can I say two? Hey, you have the mic. You can say more than one. Absolutely. Okay. Well, then I'm going to be greedy and say three. (laughs) So one is we started this summer our first randomized controlled trial. We have a clinical trial running with a university college London where our co-founder is a professor and we're still recruiting. We have two arms. One is for asthma and one is for depression. So if you're listening, you have one of these conditions, please go to the julie.co website and sign up there and see if you qualify. We also have a little raffle there. So there's some winnings in there for you which is totally kosher with the IRB. So (laughs) just saying that. The second thing is more for the payers and employers side of your listeners. We are looking to start additional pilot sites. We have really sort of a pilot in the box that makes it easy because we've cleared ethics and all of that. So we would love to work with one of the five conditions that we have. So asthma, depression, bipolar disorder, chronic pain, or migraine, we can very easily add new conditions and we can spin up any day of the week an RCT because that's built into our software. And the third thing is we just started to hit the fall season here for fundraising. So I just kicked off my seed round and funding and we're doing a $3 million round. I have a million committed. So I would love to hear from any healthcare investors that could help us scale. 
Well, hey, for our listening community, because they are some very, very passionate leaders and some of the most brilliant minds in our industry, it's a choose your own adventure with this episode. You have three different options to engage with Bettina and the Julie team. So choose your own adventure, maybe choose more than one. Heck, I mean, there's a great opportunity to help Bettina and the team out. So thank you for that, Bettina. Much appreciated. But of course, we need to be able to get a hold of you if we want to be able to help you out. Where can our community find you online, social media handles, websites, or otherwise? Well, you can reach out to me personally. I love getting emails. I am reachable at B, like the letter of my first name, at julie.co. You can go to our website, julie.co, or you can find us on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook under Julie Health. And I also have something to offer up because I offer this to people. For the last, I think, 12 years, I have offered an entrepreneurial office hour where anybody that's an entrepreneur can come and grab 30 minutes of my time and I help them brainstorm about things. It's not a pitch session. I'm, they're not on Shark Tank during that, but I try to be helpful. It's my community service for the entrepreneurial community. And you can just grab some time on my calendar so you go to calendly.com slash Bettina Hine and can schedule a session with me. And I'm so curious to learn more about the, all those companies that are out there. I absolutely love that, Bettina. Somebody that you probably know as well, Brad Feld, founder of Techstars here, actually just up the street in Boulder, Colorado, from where I'm at in Denver. And one of his big mantras is give first, right? So that's beautiful, especially in the startup and entrepreneurial community, be able to help one another out because it's a tough slog. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many exits you've had. Starting a company from scratch is definitely a tough going. So being able to rally around each other and offer that up, Bettina, bravo. So thank you for that. A phenomenal offer for our community. So with that, we're going to start shutting it down. I do have one more section. We'll get you out of here. It's a fill in the blank. I'm a passionate pioneer because? I believe that tech will save the world. Nailed it. That's the first time anybody has said that. So well done. I love it. Thank you for that, Bettina. And of course, thank you for taking the time to meet up. I know we are calling from a long distance part, but love spending time with you today here, you over in Switzerland and myself over here in Colorado. Continue the phenomenal work with Julie. We look forward to hearing what's going on with the journey. Keep us posted. But for now, Bettina, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Truly an honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I had so much fun with you here. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.